It was 2015 and I was with a close buddy of mine at the time. We spent the evening playing Minecraft on the console and he tried to teach me how to play Garden Warfare. Around nightfall, his mother told us to go to bed because we had school the next morning. In his room, he brought over his computer and told me, Dude, you're gonna love this show I've been watching. He pulled up Netflix and the intro played. <laughs> What's up guys, this is Mr. Asian Pie. It's safe to say that Video Game High School is a show which I have a very strong nostalgic attachment to. That summer, I binge watched the entire show, and a copious amount of Doctor Who. Though as always, time moved on and I kind of eventually forgot about the series, until around last year. Jerry Schlatt was live streaming the entire show with Freddy and Jimmy Wong as guests. Watching that stream made me feel giddy and the entire time I felt like the 10 year old watching that show for the first time with a friend who I haven't seen in almost 7 years. So, as a service to Rocket Jump and VGHS, today, the 10th anniversary of the premiere of Video Game High School Seasons 2, we're going to be taking a dive into the Video Game High School Iceberg because nostalgia is an addiction I have and enabling it will only make it worse. The iceberg I'm using is based off one made by Reddit user 369 cows though I made alterations to it. This is because it wasn't really a proper iceberg as the deeper levels were just story arcs and plot points which occurred later in the show, so they weren't relatively obscure. So, let's dive right in. Rocket Jump. Rocket Jump is the YouTube based studio which went through the endeavor of creating Video Game High School. They've also created numerous other short films on the platform with their most popular being The Floor is Lava which sits around 150 million views. Freddy Wong. Freddy Wong is a co-founder of Rocket Jump and one of the most famous faces from the studio. In VGHS, he plays an in-show character of the same name. Freddy was also a director, one of the creators, and an executive producer. He has also been in several other works, though his name will forever be tied to Rocket Jump and being really good at Guitar Hero. Leetmus. Leetmus in show is a holiday which serves as a compromise between Principal Calhoun and the student body. So, they are allowed to celebrate the holidays, as long as it's only kept to one day. In real life, Leetmus was created because the writers realized that there's no holidays in August. Flying Bike In Seasons 1, Episode 1, Shot Heard Around the World, Brian is mugged by K-Pop and Old Boy. After taking Brian's resources, they ditch the scene on a flying tandem bike. This is never explained. Pwn Zone Pwn Zone is an ESPN-like show which talks about high school FPS teams and other professional esports competitions. This show is hosted by Scott Slanders and Shopbot. The Law. The Law is Season 1's main antagonist and former VGHS varsity captain. He would hit a low point in Season 2 and spend the rest of the series regaining his glory back. In real life, The Law is portrayed by Brian Farnese, who is also a writer on the show. This is going to be a reoccurring trend that you're going to see with much of the supporting cast. Theme Song. In Season 2, Video Game High School obtained a proper theme song, which plays during the introduction. It was written by Raul Panther, a member of the band The Proto Men. A lot of licensed music in the show is actually from The Proto Men due to Freddy being a huge fan of theirs. Season 4 There's been lots of calls to make a fourth season for Video Game High School, with a mix of old and new cast. This is highly unlikely though due to the semi-defunct state of Rocket Jump, though Jimmy Wong has stated there has been interest in making some sort of celebration to the show. 10th Anniversary In 2021, Jimmy Wong announced that there was supposed to be some sort of 10th Anniversary merchandise release as a celebration for the show. Unfortunately, these plans fell through, likely due to the complications in business and the defunct state of Rocket Jump. Games Dean Games Dean is a minor antagonist in Season 1 who becomes a friend of Brian's in Seasons 2 onward. While his name and look is a reference to the 50s movie icon, he generally just fills the role of a generic cool kid. He's betrayed by Benji Dolly who's also an editor and an on-site technician. DK and Corn Dogs. An unintended character trait is that the Drift King loves corn dogs. In the commentary for the series finale, the N64, Benji points this minor detail out, stating, DK loves corn dogs. Every season he's eating a <laughs> yeah. corn dog or purchasing a corn dog, right? VGHS, the video game. In show, Video Game High School The Video Game was a project being worked on by the character Key Swan in the second season episode Double XP Weekend. Eventually, a playable adaptation would be hosted on the Rocket Jump website. The game itself was also an homage to classic gaming, having segments based off Mario, Metroid, and Pokemon. Unfortunately, with the shutdown of Flash, the game is no longer playable. Brian's Arcade Following being expelled from VGHS, Brian takes the job of being a janitor at an arcade. Over the course of a single day, Brian becomes the owner of the arcade and renames it to Brian's. The entire episode of Everybody Comes to Brian's is set here. This plot point is never brought up ever again, even though the arcade's revenue could have paid for Brian's tuition. I could just be overthinking things though.
So I was looking into this a little bit more, and I found that there's a whole side of the community which believes that Seasons 1 Episode 8, Everyone Comes to Brian's, is a dream. Though I found a Reddit thread from 2019 in which William Campos, one of the writers of the show, confirms that Episode 8 did indeed happen. Apparently, all the writers wanted to make a Casablanca-style episode. The Pit. No, not that one, that one. The Pit is a training level in the fictional first-person shooter Field of Fire. The real location of the Pit is the world-famous SC Village in Chino, California. Stan Lee cameo. In Seasons 2, Episode 1, Welcome to Varsity, there's a Stan Lee cameo where he plays the role of a senile judge. Real guns. A good amount of the guns shown in VGHS are actual firearms, not prop guns. I just think that's really cool. VGHS Campus. The school campus is mostly based off California State University Northridge, or CSUN. This location was chosen in particular due to its futuristic atmosphere, though other areas of the school were filmed in other locations. For example, Ace's classroom was filmed in a hangar on the premises of Noman School of Visual Arts. And lastly, the basement, and more impressively, the entirety of the frag floor were custom built on studio lots. Gilmore Girls. One of the schools VGHS competes against is Star Hollow High, which is a reference to the Gilmore Girls. VGHS Twitter. VGHS had a Twitter account which was pretty active well into late 2019, being abandoned shortly after Rocket Jump went quiet. Cancelled subplot. In Season 3, there was going to be a subplot in which it was revealed that Jumping Jacks and Wendell were gay. This was cut because there wasn't any scenes in the show in which the two characters directly interacted with one another. The lack of character interactions in general in VGHS is a subtle though odd issue the show has. Until the finale, it was rare to find a supporting character interacting with someone else outside of their relevant clique. So you'll never see a character like Drift King, who is relevant to Ted's story arc, talk to Games Dean, who is relevant to Brian's story arc, or to Duchess with Shane Barnstormer. Even with the main characters, Ted doesn't interact directly with Jenny until Seasons 3 Episode 4 Video Game Homeschool. But to be fair, high school was kind of like this in real life. Field of Fire. Field of Fire is the most popular first person shooter in esports in the VGHS universe. It obviously takes heavy influence from Call of Duty. New Law. New Law is Napalm Energy High's answer to The Law. New Law is also a massive dick. He's played by Nathan Kress, who is best known for his role as Freddie Benson in the show iCarly. Napalm Energy Drink. This is an in-universe drink company owned by the Barnstormer brothers, who made a deal with their mother to raise their stock value to $400 before they can enact their revenge on Calhoun. Their major competitor was Jock Juice, whose spokesman was VGHS's The Law. Mr. Duhini. In Seasons 2, Episode 3, Double XP Weekend, Brian reveals that his father died when he was 3. Calhoun almost dies. In Seasons 2, Episode 3, Double XP Weekend, Principal Calhoun is forced by the Countess to eat tuna. As a result, he almost dies due to his deathly allergy to fish. Pokemon. Pokemon is a partially hologramic card-based game, which is a mix between Pokemon and poker. I'll have you take a gander at which episode this game was introduced in. Prop Collection While the fandom of the show has kind of died out, a phoenix has risen from the ashes, being fans who like to hunt for VGS-related merchandise and props. Whether they were on-set props, rewards given from Indiegogo pledges, or limited-time releases, the hunt for this web series merchandise is still alive and well. Key's Games Unlike most other students, Key goes to VGHS to learn about the programming of games, not how to learn to play professionally. The games Key developed were Goom Boss, Video Game High School the Video Game, and that third one I forgot the name of. American Psycho Reference Shane Pizza's business card holds a strong semblance to Patrick Bateman's business card in American Psycho. Whether this is intended or not has yet to be disclosed. Jenny is racist. In Season 3 Episode 1, OMG WTFPS, Jenny is being interviewed by ShotBot. Not THE ShotBot, this one has yellow eyebrows. One of the questions asked is, Jenny, rank your favorite races in order! To which Jenny responds, Okay, um, well I guess the... Uh... I'm white, so white. So thus, Jenny is based in Hyperborea Pilled and literally one of us. Law's Crime. In the series finale, the N64, in a fit of rage, Law kills a customer trying to return a copy of Nintendogs, Matrix's real name. In the episode OMG WTFPS, it's revealed that Jenny and Miss Matrix's real surname is Matthews. Bust the nut. In Season 3, Episode 3, the chosen take for Law and New Law's first interaction was the Bust the Nuts take, though it was almost cut out. <laughs> Which, in my defense, I didn't actually know what that phrase meant when I did it. And then they told me afterwards, oh hey, that's really funny, but I don't know if we're going to be able to keep it in because it's like a little bit much. And I was like, what? Doesn't it just mean like... <laughs> Like, if they explode, like, oh, I can't take it, and, there's like an... <laughs> and then they, they brought you out the little book. This fact really isn't that relevant to the show. I just find it really funny that an almost 22-year-old at the time didn't know what bust a nut meant. 400 students. 
In Seasons 1 Episode 7, it's mentioned in passing that VGHS only has around 400 students, which is really small. For reference, the typical American high school has around 800 students. Nepotism. According to Mary Matrix, Jenny only got into VGHS because she put her there. Also, though not confirmed, I think Ted was also put into BGHS because Freddy was a teacher there. While Ted is a semi-decent drifter, he's an abhorrent rhythm gamer. He's so bad that Axe Legend's easiest mode is literally called Ted. VGU. In Seasons 3, Episode 2, Nobody cool goes to prom. Games Dean invites Brian to join him to go to his cousin Sam's college party. Sam's house is mentioned to be at VGU. I'll let you guess what that stands for. VGHS. The board game. There's a VGHS board game, and from what I see from the reviews, it seems to be painfully average, with the main issue being incredibly unbalanced cards. Drift King Throughout the show, Drift King remains an extremely ambiguous character. He keeps switching from being a teacher to being a student. In Season 1, it's generally implied that he's a student as he has a friendly rivalry with Ted. Though in Season 2, he confronts Ted about a missing book report that he graded, obviously implying that he's a teacher. Evidence that DK is a teacher continues into the next episode, You Can't Stop a Sandwich. Though DK isn't allowed access into the staff break room, having to send students to steal soda on his behalf. It's later confirmed in the N64 that he's a senior in high school, going off to medical school. So yeah, pretty confusing character. Also, how does being a professional Forza player build up to a medical career? Abusive parents. Every main character, with the exception of Keith Swan, has abusive or at least neglectful parents. It is implied that Brian takes care of his mother who has a crippling addiction to MMORPG. Jenny was raised solely by her father because her mother abandoned her to continue pursuing her professional career in esports. Ted's mother abandoned him, and his father blames him for his messy divorce and shitty life. When Ted is not being berated, he's simply just being neglected. And whenever Law is in a fit of rage, one of his sayings is, Your school should have left mom a long time ago! Implying that his father was pretty abusive. KD ratio. There is a fan-made kill-death ratio of all the characters on VGHS. Brian, Jenny, The Law, and Calhoun are the best players in video game high school. Though they're not the ones with the best kill-death ratio. That title goes to Key. Finale Hazards. The finale for Video Game High School was shot at an abandoned refinery, which was going to be demolished after filming. One of the directors mentioned that the building kept swaying throughout production. It was later found out that the building didn't have a foundation, and was just sitting on uneven ground, meaning that during the entirety of filming, the building probably could have just fell over. Key is evil. On a 2012 post made on the Video Game High School subreddit, a fan theory was proposed by u slash alliterators almanac. In the theory, it was stated that Key Swan has been pulling many of the strings of Brian and Ted's Seasons 1 story arc, using her programming skills to give Brian a buff in FPS and nerfing Ted's guitar so he can go into drifting. Who framed the law? It was the Barnstormers. The story would literally make no sense if anyone else was behind the setup. No one other than the Barnstormers had the true motivation to tear him down. But also, the Barnstormers had the means to frame the law, so it just doesn't make sense if it was anyone else. Alternate Takes As seen from the VGHS behind the scenes, a lot of takes kept into the show, especially the performances done by Brian Farnese, were ad-libbed. The best example being... Let's hang glide out of this loser emporium. <laughs> Engaging the enemy. During the filming of Season 1, Episode 5, and then The Law, Brian Farnese and Joy Bertrain shot a skit for their website 5secondfilm.com called Engaging the Enemy. Napalm Energy High. As a part of their scheme to take down VGHS, Ashley and Shane Barnstormer set up a high school to promote Napalm Energy drink. This is despite the fact that the school is just their corporate office and their only students are esports mercenaries. Yearbook. The VGHS yearbook was a top tier reward for the Season 3 campaign. It has a bunch of behind the scenes photos, class photos, and according to the Indiegogo, each was personalized to each of the backers. There are 146 claims to this prize, meaning that there are likely 146 unique variants of this book. Season 1 Original Script Rocket Jump published a PDF file for the original script of Video Game High School Season 1, and it holds very little semblance to how the Season 1 and the show as a whole turned out to be. This script also starts the evil Key theory, as it states Key's motivation for manipulating Brian and Ted's life is because she's a part of the Cut Shadow organization which was pulling the strings behind the scenes. In the future, I actually might look into this script, maybe as some sort of script review. Parallels to The Wizard The show has a lot of parallels to the 1989 movie The Wizard. Both are set in an alternate timeline where video games are far more mainstream than they were in our time, 
Both center around professional esports competitions, both share a theme of neglectful parents, and both have a character named Jimmy who has to cope with the death of a close loved one. I like to imagine that VGHS is an indirect sequel to The Wizard. Implications of Sex Specifically between Brian and Jenny, there are implications that they'll have sex, which is kind of weird because while the actors are over legal age, the characters they portray are definitely not. The President Throughout the first two seasons of the show, a running gag is that the President is missing. This pays off at the end in Seasons 3, Episode 1, OMG WTFPS, in which the President, in a disheveled state, crawls out of a bush, takes the camera, and tries to warn of America about some sort of impending danger. Seasons 2 Timeline A theory which has been brought up on occasion is that Seasons 2 and 3 take place an entire year after Seasons 1. This is due to a multitude of factors, such as a change in many of the sets, a slight alteration in Brian's personality, a change in supporting cast, such as the disappearance of Ace and Law's original clique, the addition of Wendell, and so on and so forth. Tony Hawk Tony Hawk makes a guest appearance in Season 3, Episode 1, OMG WTFPF. In universe, he's still a pro skater, but he's also a semi-finalist on America's Next Top President before the actual president came out of the woodwork. Real games referenced. It's called Video Game High School, so of course some real IPs would be referenced, such as Rockstar's Max Payne in GTA Vice City, Sega's Sonic, and 343's Halo. School Year When mapping out the timeline of events in VGHS, you quickly realize how weird the school's calendar is. In Seasons 2, Episode 1, Welcome to Varsity, at the end of the episode, Ted dates his book report August 24th, 2018, meaning that Seasons 2 likely started earlier that week. According to the VGHS calendar, Seasons 2, Episode 5, Some Like It Bot would have occurred on Monday, September 17, 2018. This is despite the fact that according to the BTS, Leap Miss is supposed to be in August. Lastly, we know from Brian that Seasons 3, Episode 3, A Map to Sex Town, took place on Tuesday, April 23rd, 2019. This would mean that VGHS likely started class sometime around late July or early August and ended sometime in late May, meaning that VGHS students only have two months of summer. But to be fair, their education literally consists of playing video games, so you can't really feel that bad for them. Also, this means that the entirety of Seasons 1 takes place over the course of around two weeks, as compared to Seasons 2 and 3, which occur over several months. But I'm overthinking about it, so let's move on. Dimension 404 Dimension 404 was Rocket Jump's second major production, which was also made in cooperation with Liongate Television. The show was a reinterpretation of The Twilight Zone, though with an internet-based twist. Unfortunately, the reception wasn't as warm as its more campy, lighthearted predecessor. But that's not the important stuff. What we're interested in is the show's connection to VGHS. In Video Game High School, the main FPS game in professional tournaments is Field of Fire. In Dimension 404 Season 1 Episode 6, Impulse, the main game in the FPS tournament is Field of Fire 2046. Also, we have a Jimmy Wong cameo, where he is an announcer at a local tournament. In the episode Impulse, this chick drinks a potion which alters time. She uses the drink to win an FPS tournament, but once the effect wears off, it's now years if not a decade into the future. And the future sucks due to a minor apocalyptic event and people reverting back to cannibalism. In VGHS, the wider world, or at least the United States, is in a state of deterioration, as evidenced by the fact that the president got kidnapped. Basically, what I'm trying to get to is that the apocalypse depicted in Impulse is likely the grim future which faces the VGHS universe. VGHS shut down. Despite Napalm Energy High losing the Napalm Bowl and Mrs. Barnstormer ripping up the plans for the Mega Mall, this doesn't mean that VGHS is safe from the Wrecking Ball. By the time of the finale, most of the school has already been gutted, and legally, the Barnstormer family estate still owns the property, as there's no mention of the school being transferred back to Calhoun, nor the school board. Calhoun's military experience. Principal Calhoun, sometimes referred to as Ernie Calhoun, is a sergeant, and throughout the show, he talks to the students as if they were soldiers under his command. This hints at Calhoun having a military background of some sort. I Carly Theory A theory proposed by Reddit user Mathak, it states that New Law is Freddie Benson from the Nickelodeon show I Carly, most obviously because both characters are played by Nathan Cress, though there is some more evidence which backs this theory up, mainly being that we don't know New Law's actual name and that both shows are set in Seattle. The Animated Show VGHS Knights of the Realm was a show in production at Rocket Jump. As far as we know, it has some deviant looking characters and a fully written pilot. The main issue which has thrown this project into development hell is that Rocket Jump can't get any major studios behind the pitch. At this point, I find it highly unlikely that the show will be picked up. And we once again resurface. Was this video just an excuse to watch VGHS and enable my addiction to nostalgia as if I was in my late 30s? Yes, considering the time crunch, not really. But yes. 
For me personally, VGHS is a window into a whole different world of content creation, in which had it or YouTube Red been more successful, YouTube could have grown a catalog of well-produced originals, and it would have developed a unique class of media, too advanced to be a typical YouTube video of someone behind a mic talking about something, but not overly polished and corporate feeling of modern Hollywood, a sort of internet-based revival of the silver screen. Makes you think of the lost potential. This has been Mr. Asian Pie. See you on the flip, and don't be stupid.